Now, social media has been one of the major fronts where Ukraine is fighting Russia. As Moscow's troops continue to advance the offensive in the neighbor nation, Ukraine is emerging victorious on the world wide web. Now, the West and big tech have come out in support of Ukraine and against Russia. Kremlin-backed news outlets have been banned across the EU. And social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter have come up with new regulations to curb Moscow's content. Meanwhile, Russia has rooted its information campaign towards its own people, that is, the domestic audience, as well as Russian-speaking people in neighbor nations. Now, let's take a look at Putin's team leading this propaganda war. Heading the team from the front is the Kremlin, Kremlin spokesperson Maria Zakharova. She is one of Putin's trusted loyals and is currently heading the information and press department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In the last few days, Zakharova has garnered the world's attention for a sarcastic, sometimes fierce response to Western journalists. For instance, earlier this week when Zakharova was asked about Russia's attack on a maternity hospital in Mariupol, with a straight face, she called it information terrorism, nothing else. Pre-Russian invasion, she also was the spokesperson that went viral for saying the West must inform us of the invasion so vacations can be planned ahead. Now here are some other notable statements that Zakharova has made in the last one month. The fact that Russian journalists are still at least somehow able to work in Britain is associated solely with London's fears of jeopardizing the position of the BBC Radio and Television Corporation in Russia, since it's far from being assigned the last role in undermining domestic political stability and security in our country. And I'm not fantasizing any of this. It follows from the public statements of Britain Foreign Secretary Liz Truss. Today we celebrate another day of non-aggression against Ukraine and another day that will bring us closer to the sort of war that everyone in the West, Washington and London promised us. The next general of Putin's troll army is the editor-in-chief of Russia today, Margareta Samanyan. The RT chief is among the people sanctioned by the European Union for promoting deployment of Russian troops in Ukraine. Sam and Yan first came under global spotlight in 2018. Four years ago, she conducted an interview with the suspected Salisbury Novichok poisoners, during which the men claimed that they are just a friendly gay couple and had simply visited Salisbury to see the famous cathedral. Now, in March 2018, a former Russian military officer and double agent for the British Intelligence Agency, along with his daughter, were poisoned in the English city using the Novichok nerve agent. And the third one leading Russia's information war is Maria Butina. She is a member of the Duma earlier this week while in conversation with a British radio broadcaster. Butina said, and I quote, it is the Ukrainians that are shelling themselves, unquote. Four years ago, the Duma member was also convicted in the U.S. for being a Russian spy. Back at that time, even when Putin was facing a trial overseas, her sarcasm and steel wits remained unfaltered. I didn't give up because I know I simply did not have the right to. I couldn't. Russians do not surrender. The next person on the list is Russian Senator and Speaker of the Upper House, Valentina Matvyanko. Three weeks ago, she announced the results of a vote allowing Russian troops to be sent outside the country and claims that invasion is the only way to stop the brotherly war. What's interesting here is that Matvyanko, a Putin loyalist and a proponent of invasion, was born in Western Ukraine.